Don't say you understand. Don't say everything is going to be okay. Do not ever say that things happen for a reason. Say nothing. Listen. What's up, everyone? This is Austin with another episode of Read More Writer. Um, today, I'm talking about the second person to ever teach me, really, the craft of writing poetry, so I'm real excited. Her name is Michelle Penaloza. Uh, I met her in Eugene, Oregon. I was 19 years old. I didn't know what I was doing. It was my second poetry class. I would show up to her class a good amount, less than I wish I would have. I should have got more. She's a badass fucking poet, and I'm going to review one of her earlier chapbooks, Landscape Heartbreak. It's from Two Sylvia's Press. Take a look. There's Michelle on the back. Um, so for those who don't know, a chapbook is going to be a collection of poems that's shorter. Poetry book or my book of poems or my poetry collection is usually the, the official t- jargon they use. Chat book, C-H-A-P, like a good old chap, uh, is going to be shorter. Tapping out at 25 pages. Um, I love chat books. Uh, they're usually earlier on in a poet's career, um, but they, they can be some of their best work, um, be real compact. They're usually really cohesive too, which is what we're going to talk about today. So readers, writers, humans, there's a lot to learn from Michelle in general about life and writing. One thing we're going to talk about theme today is going to be doing a creative project that really has a central focus, right? So what's great about that is it tells a story itself. So basically what Michelle did is she walked around Seattle miles and miles and miles uh, with a bunch of different people one-on-one who had uh, experienced some sort of heartbreak, grief, loss of a loved one, a partner, a father, and she walked with them. She went on these walks. There's maps in the book about it really kick ass, and she wrote a poem after each walk. So even more than a concept album, there's a story behind it. It reminds me of like uh, Richard Linklater's Boyhood, if anyone's seen that movie, great movie to check out, where he had his actors over a span of like over a decade uh, film this movie, and so like a lot of movies, when they jump ahead or back in time, they just get an actor that looks like the actor. He showed people aging on screen actually over a decade, So beside the movie itself, there's an actual story to the creative process that's really interesting. That's definitely what's going on with Landscape Heartbreak. Notes from the field is kind of the prologue. Notes from the field. I wore holes through two pairs of sneakers and had to resole one pair of boots. Four city parks, a bench outside Ouija Benaroya Hall. Over the course of a year, I asked people in Seattle to take me on walks from the Richard Hugo house to places in the city where they'd had their hearts broken. I walked with friends, friends of friends, and strangers who became friends, who found out about the project through word of mouth. Everyone who walked with me volunteered. All of them were ready to talk, ready to return to the beginning and tell their stories. Call my beginning a wound, or say it another way. A poet once asked me, What hurt you into poetry? My father died in a car crash when I was 16. I've tried to heal the wound of losing him in innumerable ways. Devotion to the idea of a heavenly father. Devotion to the attention of men, I sought to fill his absence. Devotion to the imagining and reimagining of him, the recreation of him in my poems. At the very least, at an age earlier than most, I learned what not to say to someone feeling that kind of pain. Don't say you understand. Don't say everything is going to be okay. Do not ever say that things happen for a reason. Say nothing. Listen. She goes on. Amazing stuff. So essentially, you know, not only is this a great story behind the actual creation of it, she's, uh, as she she tells us, she's she's a great person for this. Losing her father at 16, feeling that intense, intense grief being very self-aware about how she's dealt with that grief sense as she talks about the heavenly father, reimagining, imagining him, or feeling the whole with other men. Um, what a great person she knows what not to say. Well, I was just talking about this with a friend. Um, people go, you have to be around people who go through tragedies a couple of times, I think, unless you're really, really ahead of your years to learn. You say something and it's like, ah, I shouldn't have said that. That just feels fake. Um, so... This is, uh, this is, she's, she's amazing to walk with these people and it shows in these poems. It really does. 
So let's look at the first poem. This is top 50 poem for me all time. Big influential poem for me, especially when I was writing my chapbook, actually, Small Town Outside of. Uh, this poem really inspired me because it has that Northwest aesthetic to it. Um, so Michelle, she did live in Seattle, right? Uh, she grew up in Nashville. I think she's still in Seattle. I might be wrong. Uh, I met her, as I said, in Eugene, Oregon. This poem, Pentimento, uh, she really, the way she travels through time, I think you can learn a lot from here. Um, so let's get into it. Pentimento. Within an old Dutch seascape, art conservators find a whale that's been hidden for 150 years. Every day, someone says, this used to be... Below the city, another city, like a snake's shed skin or a mink stole shrugged from bare shoulders. People take tours. They gaze up through sidewalks studded with wavering blue glass, tracking the movement above them, the city's stories, a school of fish. At 7-Eleven, a woman molts her party dress for running shorts. Still tottering on high heels, she cries as a man slips into a cab, leaving her for the last time. Good riddance, someone somewhere mutters. A door slams. Dozens of couples fuck their farewells, perfunctory and mild, along the skyline. Inside the Sorrento Hotel, a woman hides from her lover inside a closet. She drinks the rain from their coats. She prays in whispers to the ghost of Alice B. Toklas. Across the city, several sets of friends have agreed to stop speaking without having said a word. House plants crave the rain dripped from window seals. Every day someone asks, remember the that used to be here? On the ferry to Bremerton, a daughter carries only antlers and mirrors and her mother's labored breathing across the water. A father is always never arriving. She covers herself with the contents of his closet. She swims in his sleeves, rowing invisible canoes past the Rite Aid marquee. Yeah. Unbelievable poem. I mentioned time before. There's moments that stick out for me, certainly. I've marked it all up like I like to do. Um, I like to make, I like to really, when I write, read, I have to read with a pen. Across the city, several sets of friends have agreed to stop speaking without having said a word. An end to, an end to like a friend group dynamic, an end to friendship because of something, you know, something traumatic happening. I recently kind of had a, a thing with that, actually with a, a group of people um, uh, through work that it just kind of, sometimes you just don't go back, right? It just kind of fl falls flat and it ends. Um, and the fact that she, Michelle uses plurals, right? To really create this, that's the one thing to do is, you know, there's good advice, which is like, be specific, be individual, tell the story right here in this moment, which is a really classic piece of advice for poets, which I think is a good one. But another one, if you, she's being specific, but she's also speaking in general, or excuse me, she's speaking with plurals in which she creates this large collective kind of human, um, human experience of grief, of losing, of loss. Dozens of couples fuck their farewells, perfunctory and mild, along the, the skyline. Again, dozens, the skyline. So the plurality to create this bigger feeling of like, this isn't just one kind of experience. This is like the passing of time through a city, right? Um, she sets the tone from, in terms of temporality right away within an old Dutch seascape. Art conservators find a whale that's been hidden for 150 years. 150 years, right? Thanks. Reminds me of the movie A Ghost Story from A24, which we've talked about before. Time passing and passing and passing. Ghost Story tells a story um, through film that goes for centuries, right? Doing that is, is a challenge. Um, how the poem ends. Buses rumble and hiss down Broadway. Right, very urban, current scenario. Buses down Broadway. She's taking, you know, I imagine all these centuries of uh, moments and times and experiences and condensing them into one poem that are all happening in this one little uh, pressure cooker, which is so impressive. Okay, second poem. Love the use of personification in this poem. It's called Advisory. Real short poem. It's about half a page. 
about half a page, real short there. Advisory. Scientists warn of rising seas as the Antarctic ice sheets turn to one another and quote O'Hara. We're the final chapter no one reads because the plot is over. Along an ocean view, the bearded irises skirt their way, wending in the wind. The subject of Japanese prints and Van Gogh's oil, the tall ones need staking. Doesn't it seem like irises must want the same thing that ice sheets must want? To be boundless and held up, to extend in perpetuity. The plot is over, but still we mold the coulda, woulda, shoulda, even as the oceans rise and the petals fall. You might have stayed with him forever. That ending. Yeah, Michelle's endings are amazing. Oh, man. There's a lot going on in... Let's count them. 18 lines. Such a short little... I mean, look, look at it. It looks like a grocery list. We also want to extend it into perpetuity. We want to be infinite. The idea of it at least sounds great, especially like a relationship, right? To end it, this is a great ending line. You know it's a great ending line when you want to read it all over again, right? Just like in film, a great plot twist is like, fuck. It's like, I need to rewatch this movie. That's, um, anyone who's seen Jordan Peele's Us? Same thing. It's like, what, there's a plot twist in that movie. Not going to spoil it, but when you see it, you're like, and it's like one of the last scenes. That's kind of a spoiler. Sorry, guys. But just like this, you know, the whole seven people watching. Sorry, I ruined the movie for you. But this, the last line, right? The last line, you might have stayed with him forever. And you're like, oh, wow. Okay, let's go back. Because this is what's going on, right? This is the walk Michelle's taken with this person. Might have stayed with him forever. 